Dates and times and .NET have always been stuck together. We can never really get them apart. That's finally changing in .NET 6. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take the inseparable two that are dates and times and tear them asunder so that they're <laughs> only half of what they were once before. I think this is a little bit sad, really. Really? No. No? This are is like, a good thing. They're things that like want to be separated, like oil and water. <laughs> Perhaps let's let's take a look at uh, at what they've done here. So let's let's start out with well the project that I'm working on. So I just have a, a standard .NET six console application here running. If I take a look at what version of .NET I'm running, it's .NET six preview seven, which is the the latest preview that's available at the time of recording. But I don't expect that these APIs are going to change with the official release. These seem to be pretty pretty settled on. So. But traditionally, if we wanted to get like to represent only a date, and there are lots of times within software where we might want to do this, like representing something like a birthday or an anniversary date or a higher date, uh, those typically we don't want to include a time with them. It's just like I was hired on June 1st, for example, and that was my start date, but it doesn't necessarily have a time associated with it. Uh, and having a time associated with it can sometimes cause problems, especially when it when we're serializing it and then uh, like saving it out to disk and reading it back mm -hmm. uh, because it might end up getting shifted according to the time zone of the local machine that it's being read on. So traditionally the way we would have done this was we would have had like date time if I wanted to get today's date. Uh, so today is date time. I would have said date time dot now or dot today. Uh, or dot now dot date <laughs> to get <laughs> really weird about it, uh, but we would do today. And if I wanted to write that out, I would say console.writeline. I would say today is date time. And that'll just do like a standard formatting on it. I just hit F5 there to run this. And uh, it outputs the date, but then also has this time attached to it because it's a date time. It has, it always has both of them on there. Mm -hmm. And from now on, I'm just gonna run these over here because it, keeps it a little higher up on the screen. So there's my date um, and time. Um, now showing as 12 a.m., whereas over here it showed as 000. That's interesting that it did it differently. Um, but typically, if we were trying to output it in a specific way, we might specify how we wanted to format it. So, uh, I mentioned like when we're serializing it to disk or if we were serializing it in say JSON and trying to get that, uh, you know, saved out across the wire so that it could be served out as HTTP response. Uh, we might do that as the ESO or ISO uh, standard date time format. And I keep saying that I'm gonna run it over here. Uh, but now what it's done is it's output that with in that standard format uh, year, month, day, and then T, and then the time being the beginning of the day with no milliseconds there, and then the offset for the time zone that we're in being zero, zero. Um, so this gets confusing when we really only want to deal with a date or a, top, a specific date. So uh, let's look at these new types. There's a, a new type called date only that was introduced here in .NET 6, and that allows us to, uh, let's say I wanted to say my hire date, I can create a date only here and I can specify, let's say 2021 and I had mentioned June 1st, so let's do that. So that would be June 1st. And if I wanted to output that, I would do higher date and I'll just output it the standard way here. And I'm gonna do Dot net run again. And now I just get 6121. So that's in my uh, local format. I can probably also do a dot two string there with the ESO format. So I would do O. 
And now I should get oh, why I keep hitting F5. And I told you all I was going to run it in the terminal here this way. Dot net run. And now it outputs it in that uh, that standard format. So it's just the date. There's no time attached, which is great. And there are also some handy methods to kind of convert back and forth because there are probably times when we're going to need to get between local date times and, and a date. Uh, so what we can do is I can say here, uh, higher date dot to date time, which will put it into a date time, but then I need to tell it, well, what time do I actually want there? So what I'm going to do is actually do that in line here and just output it directly to the console. So I'm going to say to date time, and then I can give it a time only. So I can specify specifically what time I want it to output. So let's say that I want to give it a new, new time only. Uh, and then I can give it the, there's an overload here where I can give it hours, minutes, and seconds. So I can say, nine o'clock, for example. So it'd be 9 a.m. And if I run that, we should get June 1st now at 9 a.m. instead of just June 1st without a, a time there. So there's June 1st, 9 a.m. Likewise, I can go the other way around. So if I wanted to get, um, if I had a date time already in memory, so we can start with date time dot now, for example, and I want to get uh, turn that into a date only. What I can do is say date only today as date only equals date time dot now or rather date only dot from date time and then I can say date time dot now. And I would expect that uh, we're recording today on September 10th so I would expect that to say September 10th and I will just output that to the console and we'll see what that says. And there's my September 10th, 2021. A couple other fun little uh, functions that I wanted to play with that are available here is some manipulation ones on the dates. So we can do things like add months to the to a date. Um, so I was actually kind of curious what would happen here. Let's say if... I won't be so much using February, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna use February, but I'm gonna use um, January 30th. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to add a month to it and see what it does. So um, if I was if I was hired on that day and then I go hire date dot add months one. Huh. I'm a little bit concerned that by running this, you're going to introduce two extra days into February. I guess one extra day yeah. in 2020. And Let's that's going to slow down the Earth's orbit. <laughs> Is that, I guess it's hard to really know what the consequences of that are. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Seems like a good thing to experiment with. Mm -hmm. So that gave me the 29th. And if I did that on a different year that wasn't, wasn't one of those special years with the 29th, I now only get the 28th. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, interesting. It's nice that that's kind of built in and working the way we would sort of expect it to. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, so this date only type, like, one of the main reasons that I, in a lot of my applications have used note time was for their local date, um, object that represents just a, a date without a time. And, uh, with .NET 6, I think that a lot of the places where I do use note time, I can just use this built in stuff now, which is great. Cool. And then I assume that time only has kind of like similar APIs. You can yeah. add date time date only's to it to get a date time. Um good question. So time only noon equals so if we said twelve o'clock. Uh, noon dot ooh. So there's a two time span, but I guess the, the way you would get to a time only would be to say you would have your higher date dot two 
date time and then you would give it noon as your time so that would be your welcome lunch would be your higher date at noon interesting and then that uh the time span just takes in a second time only does it uh sorry which one uh if you do noon dot oh two time span your time span would convert it to a time span. So that would be the time span equivalent of time only. Oh, like I see. The... So it's going to be like 12 hours. Yeah. All right. I was thinking it was going to give me like the difference between two time onlys, but that makes sense too. Let's see what that does. I suspect it will return a time span if I do a difference there, but. It's fun just exploring the APIs here on the fly <laughs> without any clue what it's going so to we do things here. Yeah. It's true. So first of all, let's do just var difference equals noon minus morning. So that's giving me a time span, which is okay. kind of what I expected it was going to do. And if I write that out, Remember how they format a time span, but I guess we'll find that out as well. I'm expecting that'll be three hours or whatever. There you go, three hours. Oh, that's cool. Right. Neat. So you can do like time math just using basic math things, which is kind of fun. It's nice. It's like doing time math back in kindergarten or something. We didn't have to worry about time zones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Things were so much simpler back then. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to show us this today. And thank everybody out there for joining us. And remember to like, comment, and share. And we'll see everybody in exactly seven days' time. Bye. Bye.